Let me present today's speaker, Dr. Neil Baum, who is a practicing physician in New Orleans, and he is a professor of clinical urology at Tulane Medical School. He's written quite a few books, seven total, and his most recent publication is entitled The Complete Business Guide to a Successful Medical Practice. I thoroughly recommend it. And Dr. Um, Oz has even endorsed his latest book, which is uh, his last book, sorry, which is titled What's Going On Down There? The Guide to Women's Pelvic Health. He's written over a thousand articles and more than 200 publications that have appeared in peer reviewed journals in the United States and Europe. And he and I have co authored a couple of pieces. I'm honored to be associated with such a distinguished author. But he's also a very highly requested speaker to medical practices, physician groups, and medical organizations throughout the country on topics to help doctors and practices improve their efficiency and ultimately their productivity. He provides high content presentations with ideas that can be easily implemented into any practice with minimal expense and no extra work on the part of the staff. And so I'd like to reinforce that. Minimal expense, no extra work on the part of the staff. He's a terrific leader, business visionary, marketer, and an excellent clinician. So thank you very much for being here, Dr. Baum. We're excited to hear your presentation. And at, at, at this point, I'll let you take it away. Thank you, Ron, and I want to give a special shout out to Kayla Hayes from Vanguard, who worked so hard to uh, get my slides on and make the audio connections, and uh, I know that wasn't easy, and it's so very appreciated. I think it's of interest that we tried to do this uh, a week, uh, almost two weeks ago, and it was the same day that United Airlines had their problem with uh, flights being canceled, and it was the same day that the stock exchange in New York uh, went off for about an hour and a half or two hours. So uh, I felt that the fact that our program couldn't be launched, we were in good company with United Airlines and the New York Stock Exchange. So now we don't have any problems, and I think we are all set to go. I'm going to speak to you for about, I'm going to time it for about a half hour. I'll open it to questions and answers, and then I will give my concluding uh, remarks, and we'll try to end this at about 40 to 45 minutes. My title of my talk is Creating the Almost Perfect Medical Practice. I don't want to be on the other end of the line and appear so audacious and bold as to tell you that I have a perfect medical practice, but I strive to have one, and I think I know all the ingredients that are required to have an ideal medical practice. The next three slides are what are the hallmarks of an ideal medical practice, and I'm not going to read those for you, and I'm going to make the slides available to you. But you can see that these are things that we all should be striving for. And this is on slide number three. And slide number four, again, refers to things that you want to have, such as no legal issues, no problems with malpractice. And you want to have an online reputation management that is minimum four to five stars. And slide number five, uh, I will point out to you that you want to make sure that you have emails answered to your patients in a timely fashion, either by the doctor or someone on the staff. And then it's the last thing that I want to spend and focus on this afternoon, and that is that you have a practice brand. So what do I want to accomplish in the next 30 minutes? Slide number six, I hope to be able to define the concept of branding. I want to show the importance of branding. I'm going to give you some examples of branding from my practice and also examples how to start uh, branding. And then I'm going to give you some return on the investment. What does branding mean for you? and your practice. Slide number seven I refer to as my rule of 72. And I believe strongly if you have a plan or an idea and you don't take action on it in three days or 72 hours, 
chances are you never will. And at the end, I'm going to mention to you the importance of the rule of 72. So since this is almost Thursday, let's say by Monday, I hope each of you will find something valuable and useful in this presentation that you will take action on it and implement it by sometime next Monday. Let's begin with slide number eight, branding and what is the definition of branding and what does it mean? If you were to, it comes from the concept of branding cattle. And if you were to brand your uh, cattle on a ranch, you want to make your cattle look different from all the other cattle on the range, even if all the cattle look the same. And the same applies to a medical practice. You want to make your practice look distinguished, look outstanding, and look different than all the other practices in the community, the region, and possibly uh, in the nation. The next slide, slide number nine, is that you want to create the perception that you and your practice is superior. The people who come to your practices are going to have an outstanding medical experience when they come to the practice. And in order to do this, you have to create a brand. And I'd like to share with you how that is done. The goals of branding are shown in slide number 10. And that is, if you ask anyone, any practice, multi-specialty group practice all the way to a solo practitioner, everyone will tell you, oh, my practice is special, it's unique, and we offer absolutely the best health care. And if you ask those same people, how do you know all that? And they only can tell you that they feel it in their bones and in, the, in their gut that they have the best medical practice, but they haven't, clearly haven't demonstrated. But what does branding do? Branding demonstrates your uniqueness and proves, actually proves by documentation, your superiority. And branding allows you to sculpt the ideal medical practice, to have exactly the kind of patients that you want in your practice. To show you how effective branding is, look at on the right of the slide is the Evian, Evian bottle. Evian is water. Probably doesn't taste any different than tap water. Tap water is free. And Evian charges about $1.50 a bottle. And people are paying millions and millions of dollars for Evian water when what they can get out of the tap for free. That shows you the power of branding, that you can make people pay for water that they could easily get for free out of the tap. So how do you get started? Slide number 11. You want to find out if you and your practice are best at treating a specific disease or condition. If you have a surgeon that's in the community or a medical practice in the community that treats conditions that nobody else can do, that makes you a superstar and that can easily be branded. If you have an area of interest and expertise or if there is an unmet need in the marketplace and you can call that to the attention of your existing patients as well as other potential patients, now you have something that you can brand. So what can the practice brand? Slide number 12. You can brand multiple languages. If, if, that's, uh, if you speak those languages or people in your office can speak those languages. If you can evaluate a patient on a single appointment, that is very attractive to patients. If you conduct online consultations or telemedicine, which is now on the horizon, that's attractive. I'm going to talk to you about shared medical appointments. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm going to talk to you about same-day appointments 
uh, in just a few moments and show you how that was branded in my practice. So how to get started. It, the way to get started in branding your practice is to think like the patient does. Where does the patient have their first, usually have their first interaction with the practice? It is usually on the telephone. Slide number 14 shows that the telephone is equal to an opportunity. It's your opportunity to create a positive first impression on the patient. There's a wonderful book that I highly recommend called Own the Phone. It's available from Green Branch Publishing by Spencer Peller. And I recommend that if you feel your telephone skills or the skills of your receptionist are not up to speed, I highly recommend this book. Slide number 16 shows the importance of branding by interacting with the patient before they come to the practice. This usually can begin with your website. And we'll talk a little bit more about the website and its role in branding. You want to tell the patient what to expect on their first visit. I'm a urologist. Every patient is told that they are expected to give a urine specimen at the time of their first visit. So they don't say they have, they just went before they came and now you have to hydrate them and they can spend an extra 15 or 20 minutes in the office because we didn't tell them what to expect. We also tell them to bring a copy of all of their studies and lab reports. We want a list of all of their medications, preferably if they would be written out, including their over-the-counter medications, and not to bring a plastic bag full of their medications, as this takes a lot of staff time to log that into the computer. I also recommend that you avoid the word waiting with patients. It's not a waiting room, it's a reception area. And you want to start having the patient experience your practice the moment they open the door. You don't want it to look like on the left, like a bus station or a train station. You want it to look more like on the right, where it is more like a living room. And it's where the patients can sit and relax until they are received. So make every effort to avoid the word waiting room. Be polite. Don't tell patients to turn off the cell phones in the office. Request instead that they turn off the cell phone as soon as the doctor or the nurse enters the room and then thank them. This is far more polite as to tell them to turn off the cell phone is they're not likely to do it. But the other where you're kind and have a nice uh, note in the reception area as well as the exam room, they are likely to comply and turn off the phone or quit their phone call as soon as the doctor enters the room. Scheduling is very important and I'm going to talk to you about same day appointments. I think slide number 23, shows how to conduct a time and motion study. Essentially, you want to see how long, and we do this twice a year, you want to see how long the patient's in the office and how long they spent with the physician. If the patient is in the office 60, 90 minutes and spend less than five minutes with the patient, you are not going to be giving that patient an optimal medical experience. I recommend that you create slide number 24, sacred time. This is a 15-minute slot, end of morning, mid-afternoon, where any urgencies or emergencies are told to come in during uh, this opening that you have that can't be opened until the day that the patient calls. In other words, they couldn't open up the sacred time this morning. Uh, until this morning, until we went off the uh, answering service at 9 o'clock in the morning, then they can start filling in urgencies and emergencies. Slide number 25 shows you the concept of how you can stay on schedule, and it's my experience with uh, using sacred time 
uh, that the patients beforehand were waiting 40 minutes. Now we got it down that it is usually less than 10 minutes because we are having them complete their uh, demographic insurance information and health questionnaire before they come to the practice because uh, they can load download this from the web, website. One of the things in order to brand your practice is you want us to see patients on time. The number one complaint patients have about their experience with their physician is excessive waiting. And there's really very few excuses today that uh, prevent us from being much more uh, sensitive and respecting the patient's time. There are ways to manage delays. Uh, you can anticipate them and call in the office and let them know that you are late. You can offer the patient a, uh, a coupon to get a cup of coffee and see them at the end of the day. Slide number 28, uh, you can even call the patient at home. You should send an automatic apology letter if the patient has been made to wait a significant period of time. I'll talk with you during the Q&A session about not charging patients made to wait. The take-home message I want to uh, uh, emphasize to you is that few of us can change the healthcare policy, but every one of us, there are really no exceptions, can be much more sensitive to the patient's time. In order to give that patient a positive experience, offer them amenities. We offer free Wi-Fi in the reception area and in the exam room. Slide number 32 shows that if it is cold and the patient has to get undressed, we offer blankets and uh, heaters in the room to make them comfortable. For seniors, we have reading uh, glasses that we make available both in the reception area and in the exam room. We also, slide number 34, provide them with websites, particularly websites for the elderly, because we want to direct them to what I refer to as credible websites. Every patient who comes to the office in slide number 35 gets a wallet medication card that they are to put in their wallet and list all of their medications and their prescriber. And it also has the name of our practice. In our practice, we want to emphasize wellness as much as illness. And every patient is received, adult patient receives a testicular self-exam. And on the reverse side for women is a breast self-exam. And that is given to every patient to remind them of the importance for men testicle self-exam and women breast self-exam. We want to give them value-added services for those who are older Americans and can't afford medication. We give them websites and telephone numbers where they can get their uh, medication uh, at either no expense or at a much reduced expense. We also show our brand on our newsletter that is sent out quarterly to all the patients. We collect email addresses and we are keeping in front of our patients on a repeat basis in order to brand our practice. If you're asking me the best idea for branding the patient experience after the patient is in the practice, it always comes to calling your key patients at home. The key patients are patients shown on slide 42 who've had an outpatient study or a procedure or patients recently discharged from the hospital who you know have questions about their medications, their dressing, and when they should have a follow-up appointment. The nurse or the medical assistant calls the key patients at home. They call them at the end of the afternoon. Sometimes they have, they are able to usually answer 95% of all the questions that are asked. Occasionally they have one that the doctor needs to answer and these patients are told that I will be calling on my drive time home and told to leave the phone line free at which time I will call and answer their, their questions. The results of calling your key patients at home is that you'll get fewer calls from your patients. And it is 
so very appreciated. A response from a key patient is shown in the next slide where the patient said, this is the first time a member of your profession has taken the time to call me at home and check on my condition. Undoubtedly, it fosters a better relationship between you and I. Now we know we have branded our practice. Let's talk about the magic or wonder of websites. The truth is, slide number 47 points out that patients are now selecting doctors and making appointments with physicians online. Websites are a wonderful way to attract new patients to your practice. You can provide them with all the useful information, including the full profiles and photos of the doctor. We have testimonials, which we capture as much as we can, and we have a welcome to the practice video. We also let them know that they can email thrown in the next slide, 49, that they can email the staff and the doctors, and the emails will be returned within 24 hours for non-emergency uh, questions. We also promote our areas of special expertise and interest on our website. I highly recommend you look at my website, www.neilbaum.com, as I think you will see a very effective website because I receive four to five new patients every day that come from the website. On slide number 50, it shows you how you can create a valuable word of mouth buzz about your practice. And when people are saying complimentary things about the practice, I recommend that you capture those compliments as testimonials and get patients permission to use those on your website. You want to share your brand with your colleagues and your other healthcare providers. We have a newsletter just for physicians shown in slide 52, which we send out once a quarter to all our referring physicians and potential referring physicians will also receive this on a quarterly basis. Slide number 53 shows how I connect with my colleagues, and we now connect with the colleagues using the electronic medical record, generate a referral letter that lists the diagnosis, the medications, and the treatment plan that each patient uh, has or receives in my practice, and they get a referral letter after every patient visit to the office. So how to get started. Getting started is you want to find what it is that you would like to brand. What conditions or procedures would you like to brand or to treat? You look at the demographics that you would like to attract. Would you like to attract patients between the ages of 45? Branding allows you to sculpt and to create exactly the kind of practice that you would like to have. Payer mix, would you like fee for service? Would you like insured? Would you like cash pay only? This can also be done through the use of branding. So let me give you some examples of branding from my practice. In uh, June of uh, last year, I wanted to offer same day appointment, SDA for my patients. If you typed in same-day medical appointments, New Orleans, same-day medical appointments, my zip code, my name was nowhere to be found. I then wrote a blog on same-day medical uh, appointments. I did a YouTube on same-day medical appointments and how we were able to offer those for our patients. And if you then, shortly thereafter, went to the uh, internet to Google and you typed in same day appointments and my zip code where I practice 70115, you will see that I am number three and four and on the first page of Google. If you typed in same day appointments New Orleans, again on the first page of Google. 
slide number 60. If you typed in same day appointment urologist, I am number one on the Google search. If you typed in same day appointment and my zip code, I am number uh, uh, three and four. Now you have to promote your concept in multiple places. If you go to my website, it says offering same day or next day appointment, slide number 62. The next slide, 63, shows that I mentioned same day appointments on my stationery. The next slide, 64, shows how I mentioned same day appointments on my business card. Also note that the business card contains a quick response code that can take uh, a uh, viewer from my business card directly to my website. I also use the concept of branding to communicate with the media. This is an example of an email I sent to a health and science reporter in February of this year about a new treatment I was offering for the management of the enlarged prostate gland. The next slide shows her response and she was agreeable to doing the program that I heard from her on March 4th, 2015. I then was on the uh, TV for two minutes of prime time uh, programming, uh, drive time home programming or on the TV at the 5.30 News on March the 12th, 2015. And then the results started coming in. I got a little, oh, now there's nearly uh, three dozen uh, patients uh, uh, calls for appointments for the procedure I was trying to brand. At that time, I got seven workups and also did four procedures and also one patient had multiple procedures, and that is the prostate operation and a penile prosthesis. Yes, branding does work. So here are some of the benefits of branding. You're going to get more patients, but you're going to get the patients that you want to have in your practice. It's exactly the kind of practice, the ideal practice, that you would like to have. You're going to increase your uh, procedures and uh, admissions to the hospital, if that's what you're interested in, or to the ambulatory uh, treatment center. But most important, look at the last three bullets. You're going to become more productive. You're going to increase your profitability. <coughs> Excuse me, and ultimately, when all this takes place and you branded your practice, you're going to have more fun and enjoyment from your medical practice. So in summary, wow, 29 minutes, right on target. Summary, branding creates an image for your practice. The image that you want to put forth, the image that you are special that you are doing something unique and that your practice is different in a positive way from all the other practices in the community. It identifies your unique services. It offers the opportunity for patients to share their stellar experience with you and your practice. And it's your promise to your patients that you must deliver on a consistent basis. You just can't say it, you have to do it. It is now uh, 4.30 Central Standard Time. I'm on time on budget, uh, Ron, and I'd like to open it up for a few questions and then I will conclude. Well, we have some. Bravo, Dr. Baum, for bringing the topic of branding down to earth to a very practical level, I hope. Uh, everyone feels the way I do, which is there's so much of this marketing mumbo jumbo these days, and this really makes it very tangible. And that really leads to the first question. Uh, I, the uh, question is, I see that you've gotten as many as 11 patients from one branding maneuver. If I brand and do these things that you're asking me to do, how many new patients a day might I expect? Well, 
it, it depends exactly on what you're trying to brand. If you're trying to brand a weight loss program, you could get, you, you could, your cup could run us over because the number of people that are interested in losing weight, at least in Louisiana, are, uh, there's multiple op opportunities. In my practice, I get four to five, sometimes more, but average four to five new patients a day, every single day I'm in the office that come as a result of branding. So you can, now it isn't going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen in the next week. This take, is a process. This takes several months to work. But if you keep at it and you follow the guidelines that I gave you, and I will also uh, make available my article on branding to you, you can expect to get multiple patients every day as a result of branding. Very good. So much depends on the type of specialty, the size of the practice, what you're branding, et cetera. It makes total sense. So here's one from Kelly Runtis. Uh, how do I get my practice on page one of Google? That is the hottest topic I think going is to get on the number on on the top of the Google to get on the first page. And this comes. I, I'm going to uh, allude to this in my article that I'd be happy to send out. It's also, I'm going to show you a copy of my book that is available on getting to the top of Google. But essentially, it is to constantly keep putting information and content on to your website, your blog site, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. You don't have to do all that in the beginning. You start with your website and a blog. If you go into wordpress.com, type in my name, you will see about 1,000 blogs. And I blog on everything from urologic topics to general health to uh, today I just wrote a blog on treating sunburn with oatmeal. But you have to have clever titles. Uh, what's going on down there? That's the title of my book is a, a title that is very effective for urinary incontinence. If you put urinary incontinence diagnosis and treatment, you're not going to get much traction. If you put leaking urine, what's going on down there, you are likely to get hundreds or perhaps thousands of responses. Uh, I also do a YouTube. I have 100 YouTube videos. Uh, on YouTube, and I strongly recommend that you go to YouTube and look at samples of them. So it's consistency of updating and providing content to your uh, social media. You can do it yourself. Uh, it is possible. Most doctors are not going to find the time to do it, and I think uh, Vanguard can be so very helpful in doing this for you. Uh, it is uh, not expensive. And if you think if you can get on the first page of Google where you must be, uh, and if you get four to five new patients a day, I can tell you uh, uh, two, one or two new patients will more than pay for your uh, Vanguard to help you get on the first page of Google. Uh, that actually is a good segue to the next question from another practice administrator who says, I have doctors who do not like to spend money on intangibles such as marketing. It would be a very hard sell for me to try to get someone to help us from the outside. Do I need an outside marketing consultant to help me brand? No, you do, no, you do not. Uh, oftentimes, a younger physician just starting has the time to create a blog, to do a YouTube, and if you'll if you'll look at what I've done, I haven't paid anything. I do it. I have people in my office do it. I have my associate do it. Uh, I do some of it, but uh, we we don't pay for it. And so the doctor has to decide if if he is interested in getting and attracting these kind of patients and building his brand, will he commit the time and energy to do it? If on the other hand, 
he's maxed out, too busy, uh, but wants to see about uh, sculpting and getting the type of patients he wants to have in his practice and doesn't want to spend the money. I, I respect that. He can do it. He or she can do it. But you're going to have to delegate some of that to your existing staff or the doctor will do it himself. But you do not necessarily need to go to an outside uh, uh, resource or service to help create the brand. It's just time. In other words, the, the, let's just, I'm throwing out, let's just say it's $500 a month. Uh, what would you have to do? How hard would you have to work? to make $500, it probably, you know, isn't a full hour. And you can easily, uh, if, if you see the results. Now, one of the things that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make sure that you're getting a return on your investment. In my practice, we get more than a return on the investment that, that we put into it. I have another question. Uh, and this is one from actually an orthopedic practice that says, how is it possible not to charge patients when they've been waiting? And I think the question, the implication here is that you have insurance complications and other things. Right. Okay. If you don't charge. I, I, I'm glad I got a chance to answer that. Uh, if, if you're late and the patient's really upset, I say to the patient, I, I mean, you can tell. You can see their jugular veins dancing over their shirt and they're leaning forward. Their face is red. They're blood pressure is up there, visibly angry. I walk in and I say, you know, I am so sorry, I am late. I give a reason. The previous patient had a situation that required me to spend additional time there. Because I am late, I'm not going to charge you. Now, you can get away with that by not charging the insurance company and waiving the copay. That is illegal, but to say I'm going to see you for free is not illegal. The Office of the Inspector General is not going to come knocking at your door because you gave pro bono care away. What you cannot do is waive the copay. Now, let's just say the office visit was $100. Isn't my reputation, which I spend my whole life protecting and polishing worth more than that $100 that I would have collected from an angry patient who will go out and uh, denigrate me to, to the, the public. It is far better for me to say there'll be no charge. I've gone out to the public, introduced myself. I said, hi, my name's Neil Baum. And somebody will say to me, oh, wait a minute. I heard about you. You're the doctor that didn't charge a patient that was made to wait. Now, wasn't that worth more than $100? I can tell you it is. But remember, don't waive the copay. That's illegal. Um, I've got a question here. Uh, it's pretty interesting. I think this is a common problem in many places. It says, I run a urology practice of 26 physicians in Pennsylvania. I very much appreciate your comments on staying on schedule and your wonderful tips. However, how do I get my doctors to change their mindset about punctuality? I think the application here is the staff can do a lot, but if the, the doctors aren't on board, then it undermines it. It's got to be that help that office manager. You've got to notify the doctor. It's trickle down. If the doctors aren't is not on time, the staff's not going to be on time. If the doctor's not on time, the patients won't come on time. If the doctor is 45, routinely 45 to 60 minutes late, the patients will dribble in as they deem uh, appropriate for them. You'll be uh, uh, go over the end of the day. You'll have to pay overhead. The doctor has to come a few minutes early. The doctor should give, like I do, I give a pep talk before we start the day, telling everybody, you know, about what we're going to accomplish today, who are some of the, what are some of the issues that we have to cover, make sure we have all of the reports and blood work on the chart or in the electronic record before we start the day. I arrive, 
five or ten minutes early. I do not go to look at my computer in the stock returns or read the newspaper or return phone calls. I do not accept uh, pharmaceutical reps to come into the office while I am seeing patients. What message do you send to your patients when the pharmaceutical rep walks in, the patient's waiting a half hour, the pharmaceutical rep walks in, goes to the front of the line. That's saying to the, to the patient, the paying patient, that the pharmaceutical rep is more important than I am. They know what's going on. Pharmaceutical reps schedule appointments with the practice. It doesn't have to be a lunchtime, but they schedule appointments with the practice. We see them on time, but we do not allow them to cut in while we were seeing patients. We treat being on time as something sacred in the practice. The doctors have to be there on time, and we you can reward the doctors. They can be tiny rewards and tiny penalties, but you have to ask the doctor, do they want to have an on-time practice where they get good patient surveys, positive patient surveys, because they're going to get compensated in the future by the results of the patient uh, satisfaction scores. And you aren't going to get a good patient satisfaction score if they're waiting 90, 120 minutes in the practice, uh, waiting for the, waiting for to be seen by the doctor. So good scheduling is vital to having good patient satisfaction scores and it starts at the top. You can't ask the staff to be on time if the doctor's not on time. You can't ask, and if the patient is late and they're not the patient is late and there is, it's a situation where they're not elderly or they're depending on someone to bring them in. Listen, we give, we, we're flexible and we are understanding. But if it's a patient who drove, could be there and should have been on time is chronically late, we say to them, you will be seen at the end of the line. We were expecting you at two o'clock, it's 2.45. If you want to reschedule, fine. And then that patient is always rescheduled as the last patient of the day. So we train the patients to be on time, just as myself and my associates are, I use the word trained, but we are conscientious about being on time for our patients. So, so that 26 member group, the, the chief, uh, managing partner has to commit to patients uh, to the doctors being on time. And then it will trickle down all the way down to the patients and the staff. It's a cultural change. It's a commitment oh, to a yeah. certain culture. The, the, you actually have to have a change in attitude about the importance of being on time. The other thing that I would recommend that that practice do in all other practice is do patient surveys. And surveys, they what bothers you most about this practice? What could we do to improve? And you will see the answer saying, we want to have access to getting an appointment. We don't, you know, if a patient calls and says, I have stinging and burning when I urinate, and they're told that they have to come wait two weeks, they're going elsewhere, urgent care and never come back. And so uh, we have created that, that same day appointment concept so we can get the urgencies and emergencies in. Listen, if a patient calls and says they're having erectile dysfunction, uh, we don't call that an emergency unless he has one that lasts four hours, like on TV. Uh, we don't call that an emergency, and they get a you know a appointment in the future. But if someone has uh, scrotal pain or, or kidney stone or burning on urination or blood in the urine, they're told to come in and we create a same day appointment for them. But yes, it has to be an attitude change all the way at the top. But our next question actually comes from a doctor and a good a good friend and client of Vanguard's, Dr. Rink Murray in Chattanooga, Tennessee, who by the way is going to be our next webinar presenter and I want to uh, talk about that in just a moment. But he asks, uh, you have some very good suggestions for search engine optimization and Google rankings, blogging, et cetera. How do I find the time to do some of this myself? Do you have any tips from your experience on setting aside time from clinical duties? 
Yeah, this is not, this is something I do between cases. Uh, uh, he's he's a, a urologist, did you say? Dr. Murray is a urologist? Actually, he is the son of a urologist. He is a uh, reproductive endocrinologist, fertility okay. doctor. Uh, I often will do this, you know, during downtime, like between cases. Uh, I often will do it uh, uh, sometimes early in the morning. I often uh, de delegate some time on the weekends to it. I find content everywhere. Uh, I go to uh, Google search and I have uh, one of the things about getting on the first page of Google is you have to effectively use keywords, but maybe we could give another webinar an, another time on uh, getting to the top of, of Google. But it's also uh, there, uh, if you type in my name and getting to the top of Google, you'll get my article on how to do it because you have to use keywords and you have to find content. Content for me is everywhere. The other day I walked into the lounge, surgical lounge, and I saw a article in a pharmacy throwaway about splitting pills and the danger of splitting certain pills like antihypertensive pills and uh, heart, heart pills and antibiotics. These are dangerous pills to split. And so I found that article and I blogged on it. Now, no patient is calling my practice to say, I'm, I want to see Dr. Baum because I read his article about pill splitting, but people are going back to my website over and over and my blog site over and over again because I'm providing credible content. Your practice is special, and you are special, and you are unique. Now go out and scream it from the rooftop, but particularly from the Internet site and the social media to let people know how special you are, what makes you unique and special. So don't just say it, last slide, my real final message to you, don't just say it, because that's hollow. That won't get you any points. You've got to go out and as Nike says, just do it. For those of you who are interested in a copy of the slide or a copy of my paper on branding, if you write to me, there is my email address on slide 75, and you just write in at the top, Ideal Medical Practice or Branding. That will be sent to you uh, shortly. I also uh, would like to uh, uh, give a shout out for my book. This is just published uh, in January of this year. It's the Complete Business Guide for a Successful Medical Practice. It's about how doctors need to be involved in the business of medicine. No longer is it a sin to talk about patients as customers, and we have to treat them as something special, and we have to give outstanding service, and we have to get involved in the business of medicine. Well, Ron and Kayla and all of you out there listening, including Dr. Uh, Murray and also uh, the doctor, uh, the uh, office manager, uh, Kaylee uh, Bruntis. Uh, I thank you all for uh, taking the time to listen. I hope you found good, useful information. I'm eager to hear from you. This is Neil Baum signing off from Cajun country where it's 95 degrees and 95% humidity. <laughs> I thank you very much, Dr. Baum. I have a couple of practices. Uh, I want to underscore the value of Dr. Baum's book with his co-authors that you see on the screen now. Uh, it is one of it is the most comprehensive book. It's a very thick book full of information on everything from uh, employee compensation to negotiating with insurance companies to marketing, of course. It's very well worth the, the, the cost. Um, I also want to note that uh, we will have our next webinar September 17th with Dr. Rink Murray from Tennessee Reproductive Medicine of Chattanooga, Tennessee. And the topic will be social media for physicians and why you should do it. So uh, we'll be sending out an email on that uh, very soon. Uh, in addition, today's webinar has been recorded, will be posted to our website. I'll make it available also to Dr. Bombs 
website as well. He's very generous in uh, sharing his email with you. I encourage you to contact him. He's one of the most helpful, friendly, supportive people you could ever meet. Um, and in the meantime, uh, please keep uh, your eyes and ears tuned our way for our newsletter and other information about future webinars, including the one on September 17th with Dr. Murray.